SureDog.com here with Marlos Kunin. Unsuccessful tonight in your bid for a 145 title here in Bellator. Talk to me a little bit about the emotions. Talked to you a little bit yesterday. Uh, I imagine this retirement was already on your mind. Um, yes. I, w I have been um, overtrained for many years, for over more than a decade. And um, It has been a very long road. A lot of things happened, physically, mentally. Um, I often was in the cage, really feeling really sick. I never showed. And um, in 2013 or 2012, I found out what it was. I've, I, I've seen every doctor in the world, so, so to speak. And I found out that I was overtrained for more than a decade. It's not just like normal overtraining that you sweat in the night and stuff like that. Like I had attacks. And every time when I step into the cage, <laughs> I was afraid I would get an attack. <sighs> and this time, after Homer trained me, and we did the last training camp too, this training camp, and I could go for the five times five minutes again. And I felt so confident. And um, I wanted to go out with a bang. <laughs> I did go out with a bang, but there were bangs on my head. I respect Julia, and every fighter that was for me knows that I'm a bitch prior to the fight. It's just mental warfare. After that, I'm, I'm normal Marlos again. And um, if there's one message that I want to give out to all the fighters that are still fighting is please listen to your body. And listen to your intuition. Find the people around you that respect you for who you are. They don't push you over your limits. <laughs> and I'm very proud to see what all the women in MMA are doing. And I hope I won't re be remembered as a baby. <laughs> all the crying I'm doing right now. Uh, it's been a really good career. And I'm really grateful for Bellator. They picked me up when I was in a very low place. And Scott Coker has given me so many opportunities throughout my career. And he's a martial artist, he's an eight degree black belt. He knows what fighters feel. And both Strike Force and Bellator have always been at home. And I know that when you fighter, you just have to show up and fight. But with Strike Force and Bellator, it was like a family. Rich, Carrie, Jeff, MJ, all the people around. I feel really appreciated. And I want to thank the fans. Forgive, I'm so sorry for giving so much love. And I hope the next interview, <laughs> I will not be crying anymore. <laughs> That was basically it. Have you thought about what life is going to be like after tonight? Do you have a plan? Do you know what you want to do? Do you want to stay involved with martial arts, with mixed martial arts, things like that? Yeah, I know. Um, yeah, I have. Of course, I have my gym in Amsterdam. But MMA is so much more than a sport. It's so much more than beating the shit out of each other. It's the perfect tool for empowerment. And um, I've learned so much. Like fighting Cyborg twice. I love Cyborg, by the way, don't get me wrong. She beat the shit out of me, but I like her a lot. But you can grow as a human being from fighting. And a lot of people in my country then don't realize it. And I think still, though we're getting mainstream, a lot of people don't understand the essence of fighting. It's like exchanging energy. You can learn so much from it. And that's what I want to do. I want to coach people. I want to coach. Uh, my focus will be on women because I think that women need some empowerment. And uh, slowly but steady, that's what I will do. To have your family here, yeah. talking, you talking about how fighting is more than just beating the shit out of people. It's, it's about this empowerment, to be able to bring your family into something that has meant so much to you for so long. How has that sat on you emotionally this week? 
Yeah, well, my brother, Robby, was in my corner. I asked him, do you want to be in my corner? He was like, ah, I don't care. I was like, he really don't understand what it means. And later he found out, he was like, yeah, please, can I still be in your corner? He has never seen me fight in real life. He lives in London for many years already. So it was really important to me that he came because he was the one who brought me to my first martial arts class. And he has always been there for me. He has been a really big brother. <laughs> And I think that meant the most to me. I mean, my mom and dad. They've always supported me. I mean, they saw the contractions that I had, the energy that I never had. And they have begged me to stop fighting, but I just couldn't. There was this fire in me. I needed to do it. And but though they didn't want me to fight, they always supported me. And it meant, yeah, it was a great deal to me that they came. And I'm ashamed that it was such a lousy fight. When people look back at the contributions that Marlos Kunin has made to women's mixed martial arts, what's the, the main thing that you would like for them to take away from that, from all the years that you've put in, what you've done in this sport? It's hard to say. The only thing that I hope is that people see me as a true fighter. But I cannot demand that. It's something that fans, or if they're not fan or whatever they are, that they give you, I cannot ask that. But if they give it to me, that will mean the world.